it's believed that around 70% of households in the United States have at least one pet, which is around 90 and a half million families, and the vast majority of these either have dogs, cats, fish, or birds. While most people opt for a tried and tested species to welcome into their home, there are other people who decide upon animal companions that are far more unusual. Join me for today's video as we take a look at 15 of the most bizarre pets that people actually have. Number 15. Fennec Fox Native to the desert regions of North Africa, the fennec fox is the smallest known species of fox, an adaptation they've developed to endure the temperatures and lack of water in their natural habitat. With unusually large ears, which help them regulate their temperature and also to detect prey underground, they live in burrows in the wild, where they live in large social groups. They've long been prized by locals, mainly because of their fur, but also their undoubtedly cute appearance, calm temperament, and varied diet that means they've become popular around the world as an exotic pet. In the United States, for example, they're classified as a small, wild, exotic canid, and there's an official breeder's registry to ensure they aren't inbred. Their true numbers in the wild aren't fully known, though, because it's difficult to track animals like these that live underground, so it's illegal to capture wild ones and transport them elsewhere, unless there are special circumstances. So the vast majority now. that are now kept as pets have been commercially bred, and they aren't exactly easy to take care of as pets that most people are familiar with. While they'll adapt to living around a house, they will need a large outdoor area, preferably with sand that they can dig in, and ideally will be part of a group of at least three or four. Number 14, here, Crocodile. An animal that can grow to 20 feet long, or about six meters, has a vicious temper and frighteningly large and sharp teeth, hardly sounds like something that would make the ideal pet. But amazingly, there are some people around the world who keep crocodiles in their homes. There's no doubt that they're fascinating creatures that have existed in their own biological niche for at least 55 million years and show a much higher level of intelligence than you might expect. While owners will never be able to train them to fetch, they definitely learn to recognize faces and how to react to certain events, and they'll show signs of their personalities that are far from being the man-eating monsters that they're often known as. They aren't suitable for everyone, though, and even the smaller ones can cause serious injuries. And this means that ownership is highly restricted, with many places banning it altogether. The most difficult part about keeping one, however, is their accommodation, as they require constant temperatures and an area of water and land to explore, as well as enough around to keep them stimulated, such as food to hunt or apparatus that they can bite and tug against. Number 13. Jerboa Millions of people around the world have small pets, like hamsters, gerbils, or mice. But for something more unusual, some choose to have a jerboa. These small rodents originated in the deserts of North Africa and Asia, where they're mainly active at dusk and dawn. Amazingly, jerboas are able to run at speeds of up to 15 miles or 24 kilometers an hour, something that's useful when they need to escape predators like owls, and they've developed extremely good hearing to give them plenty of warning of dangerous near. As a result, most jerboa have extremely large ears in comparison to the size of the rest of their body, and their tails are long too, sometimes more than the length of the head and body, so it can be used to propel them forwards in combination with their strong legs and a hopping motion that looks similar to a kangaroo. With a similar diet to that of a hamster, jerboas are solitary animals in the wild, which means they're relatively easy to take care of in captivity, and they're relatively tame and docile when they feel safe. They are, though, quite difficult to get a hold of outside of their natural region, so it's mainly there that people have them. Number 12. Sugar Glider Found in the wild across coastal forests of Australia and some of the nearby islands, sugar gliders are a nocturnal type of possum that can grow to around 12 inches or about 30 centimeters. They're covered in a coat of thick, soft fur that's usually blue-gray in color, and they're perfectly adapted to survival in their natural environment. Their huge eyes means that they can see the faint glimmers of light at night, and their ears can swivel independently to know what's around them. They are omnivores and will mainly eat insects, but when these are in short supply, they'll feed on the sugary sap of trees. To do this, they'll strip the bark off the trees and bore holes with their teeth to access the fluid inside. And they have an enlarged cecum in their intestines to help digest the high sugar content. 
The main thing they're known for, though, is the gliding membranes that are between their hind and forelegs, and when they're opened, allow them to glide across the treetops, an ability that's extremely useful on the search of food to avoid predators. They're so cute that it's no surprise that people want to keep them as pets, but only a few actually do. The ones sold as sugar gliders in the United States, for example, are usually a different species, called Kreft's gliders. And keeping them in captivity in Australia is controversial because of the concerns about potential impact on their wild populations. Number 11. Prehensile Tailed Porcupine There are at least 58 different known species of porcupine around the world, and they come in a wide range of different shapes, colors, and behaviors. One of the most unusual is the Prehensile Tailed Porcupine which is a species that's native to Central and South America. And it's their rareness, as well as their behavior and appearance, that's made them popular with some exotic animal collectors. They're one of the smaller species, measuring just 12 inches or 30 centimeters long, and they only actually grow spines over their main body. Their prehensile tail is instead covered with fur, and this allows it to be used to grab onto branches. When used in conjunction with their modified front and hind feet that are also extremely good at grasping, these porcupines are excellent climbers and will spend most of their lives hidden in the tree canopy. They are herbivores and will normally perch themselves in a tree where leaves, fruit, and flowers are easily accessible. Keeping them can be tricky because of their requirement for climbing, and their nocturnal and relatively sedentary lifestyles mean they aren't necessarily the most interesting of animals to have. Each develops very distinctive personalities, though, and can be encouraged out of hiding with the right treat. Number 10. Hyena. They're known as one of the most mischievous and potentially dangerous of all pack animals, but this hasn't deterred some people from choosing hyenas as pets. While you may think they're closely related to dogs because of the way they look and behave, they're actually genetically much more similar to cats. Normally forming large groups that they hunt with, there's a particular risk with welcoming a hyena into a home that already has dogs because unless there's some serious and consistent obedience training, they may be able to form a pack and affect the behavior of your other pets. Even if you get beyond the legal obstacles, are able to put in the effort to train them, and have a large enough compound to keep them, there are still huge risks involved with being around hyenas. They aren't domesticated at all and have a natural need to hunt, and based on fossilized remains that have been discovered, along with written records spanning back thousands of years, they will quite happily kill and eat humans. The four species of hyena can grow to a maximum size of 65 inches, or 1.6 meters long, which means that if they take a liking to you and get an opportunity, they won't hesitate in turning you into their next meal. Number 9. Ocelot Ocelots, they're a magnificent spotted wild cat that are native to regions across Central and South America. Growing a body length of around 39 inches or about a meter long, with a tail that adds a further 17 inches or 45 centimeters, they are nocturnal animals that mainly hunt armadillos, opossums, and rabbits. In the wild, they're solitary unless looking to mate and patrol huge regions of jungle. They are adept climbers too, so will usually sleep in the tree canopy during the day, where their striped and spotted markings make them virtually invisible. There's no doubt that ocelots are much better suited to living in the wild than in captivity, and while they can potentially be dangerous to humans, they've been revered since the times of the Aztec and Inca civilizations. If they're reared in a loving and attentive environment, they'll easily develop a playful personality, albeit one that can occasionally lead to accidents, because they're such prolific jumpers. The worldwide trade in ocelots is, of course, restricted, but this hasn't stopped several notable celebrities from owning ones over the years. Possibly the most famous of all was artist Salvador Dali, who had an ocelot named Babu, and were, for a time, inseparable. The two were seen in restaurants in Manhattan, and on a transatlantic crossing of the SS France, but in a sign of how troublesome they can be, there was an incident at an art gallery in Paris when Babu made a nuisance on some of the exhibits. Number 8. Tenric Tenrics are a varied range of mammalian species that are endemic to Madagascar, and just like many other animals found in the country, are uniquely distinct from creatures elsewhere in the world. Despite this, they've evolved many of the same characteristics as other mammals and can resemble hedgehogs, opossums, shrews, or mice. 
Depending on the species, a fully grown adult tenric can range in size from the smallest, shrew-like ones that are just 1.8 inches long, to the largest, hedgehog-like ones that can be up to 15 inches long. Often living in communities of up to 20 individuals, they have poor eyesight, and most species are fully nocturnal. Their main way of sensing the world around them is through their highly sensitive whiskers, and you'll see them waving these around to create a mental image of their environment. Because of their size and relatively small area that they need to live, tenrics make up a very small percentage of the worldwide exotic pet trade. They're insectivores, so only need to be fed worms and small invertebrates, and need places to climb and dig. They don't particularly mind being handled by humans, but can become irritated if this is too rough, and unless they're hand-raised from birth, they won't crave human attention like many other pets do. Number 7. Zorilla a Zorilla, which you may know as a striped polecat, is a species of carnivorous mammal native to dry and arid regions of central and southern Africa. Looking similar to a skunk, although not closely related, they tend to grow up to around 28 inches or 70 centimeters long and develop a striped fur that will usually be of similar colors to where they are born in order to help with camouflage. They are solitary nocturnal creatures that only seek out others in order to mate, otherwise they'll dig burrows of their own and spend their time hunting rodents, snakes, birds, and amphibians. Apart from the way they look, they're also similar to skunks in the way that they're able to emit a noxious spray, as well as having a foul odor and can temporarily blind predators that they're trying to escape from. They are occasionally aggressive when defending their territory, along with their spray and their sharp digging claws means that they can be a real challenge to keep as a pet, but it's not impossible. They're very similar, in fact, to keeping ferrets, although ferrets tend to be preferred because they're more social and enjoy human interaction far more. Number 6. King Cobra Various species of reptiles are popular with owners around the world, but only a few take on the risks of purposefully keeping one of the most venomous known snakes, the King Cobra. Native to the jungles of Southern Asia, they are the longest venomous snakes on Earth and can measure up to 19 feet or 5.5 meters from the tip of their snout to the end of their tail. Found in a variety of different colors which help them camouflage in the specific habitat they come from, they are an unusual species that rarely hunt other vertebrates and instead prefer to prey on other snakes. The King Cobra's threat display is one of the most well-known in the animal kingdom, and we'll see the snake raise its head upright, spread its neck flap, and hiss. They can strike across quite some distance, and once they've sunk their teeth in, they will usually inject as much venom as possible without letting go. In the rare cases they attack a human in the wild, this will almost always require immediate medical assistance, and the venom is, in theory, powerful enough to kill an adult in just 15 minutes. It's this risk of danger that means it's illegal to keep them as pets in most places, and even where it is allowed, you need to be a highly experienced owner to even consider one. Number 5. Polar Bear of the six known species of bears that are still alive in the world today, by far the largest and most powerful are polar bears. Native to ranges that are almost entirely within the Arctic Circle, they can grow to an enormous 10 feet or 3 meters in length and can weigh as much as 1,000 pounds or about 450 kilograms. Also known for being highly aggressive and having huge sharp claws that make light work of anything they attack, polar bears aren't in any way suited to being pets but that didn't stop one man from having one. Mark Dumas, who used to run a bear sanctuary in Canada, had raised 26-year-old Aggie from when she was just a pup and had never even encountered another polar bear in her entire life. She was therefore as close to being domesticated as the species can be, and because she was trained, she featured in a number of movies and adverts over the years. At home, Aggie and her owner would roll around and play together, and even swim in the same pool as each other, something that in the wild would be a certain death sentence. Despite their close bond, though, owning a polar bear is only something that's possible when you're physically fit and able. So, in early 2022, Aggie was transferred to a zoo in British Columbia for both her and her owner's safety. Number 4. Capybara Native to savannas and dense forests in South America alongside expanses of water, capybara are the largest species of rodent on Earth. Closely related to guinea pigs, they can grow to around 4.5 feet or 1.4 meters long and weigh up to 200 pounds or 91 kilos. 
Their docile nature and tolerance of humans means that they're a common sight at zoos around the world, but some people have taken their love of them a step further and adopted them as pets. As a social species, it's important that capybara aren't isolated, so owners will need at least two or three of them, and they also need a large amount of land to feed and explore, as well as a pool of water to swim in. The rules of owning them vary from place to place because of the risk of them carrying diseases like Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever, and you have to be very careful with their behavior, because they can breed rapidly and form colonies of hundreds of individuals in a matter of years. Still, in recent times, they've begun to become increasingly popular as pets, and while they certainly seem bizarre, there's now a good chance that someone close to you actually has one. Number 3. Sloth with six species found throughout the rainforests of Central and South America, sloths are arboreal mammals that get their name because of how slowly they move, and in fact they rarely leave the tree that they call home. Typically growing to around 31 inches or 80 centimeters long, their limbs are much longer in proportion to their bodies than most other mammals, which helps them to climb and hang on for long periods of time. They have poor eyesight and hearing, relying instead on their sense of smell and touch to search for food, and they're extremely solitary animals that will only ever engage with another when it's mating season. Their specialized lifestyles mean they're particularly affected by human developments, and one of the major causes of death in regions happens when they attempt to climb onto power lines. This also means that they're extremely difficult to take care of in captivity, especially in a home setting and unless an owner has a large jungle space for them to live in, it's seen as highly unethical to keep a sloth. Despite this, there's a large market for the illegal trade of them as exotic pets around the world, and there are now a number of organizations dedicated to rescuing them from inadequate conditions to hopefully rehabilitate them so they can be released back into the wild. Number 2. Kinkajou Another incredibly cute animal that's native to the jungles of Central and South America is the kinkajou, and the moment you see one, it becomes clear why they're kept as exotic pets. They're mammals which are closely related to raccoons and are also known as honey bears. In the wild, their diet is mainly made up of fruit with a particular fondness for figs, but in captivity, they love to eat honey, although there's no proof that this commonly happens in their natural environment. Their playful and generally docile temperament means that they can be good pets if they're kept in the right surroundings. And in Guatemala and Honduras, where they're often kept in homes, they're called Micoleon, which means lion monkey. There are questions, though, around the ethics of keeping them as they're a nocturnal species and can become stressed and frightened when their daytime sleep is interrupted by sudden movements or noise, something that in the wild would usually mean a predator is approaching. There's also a risk, according to the CDC, that a kinkajou may carry a type of raccoon roundworm because of the species' similarities, and if this is transmitted to humans, it can cause serious health concerns. Responsible owners, though, who provide ample space and conditions for their kinkajous will find them loving and fascinating creatures, but they have to be prepared to have them for a long time because they'll usually live for between 23 and 40 years in captivity. Number 1. Hippo Sub-Saharan Africa is home to countless incredible animal species, and plenty that can be deadly to humans. While you may think the biggest threats come from lions, snakes, or packs of hyenas, it's hippopotamus that are arguably the most dangerous thanks to the fact that they are the third largest land mammals after elephants and rhinos and can be highly aggressive. Surprisingly, the closest living relatives to hippos are whales and dolphins, and they show their higher levels of intelligence that you'd expect from those species. They're semi-aquatic, spending most of their time in rivers, lakes, and mangrove swamps, and will only usually emerge to graze on grass. Hippos have been responsible for one of the largest human fatality counts of all animals, with around 500 deaths attributed to them each year, and this behavior was recorded as long ago as ancient Egypt, where carvings depict of how ferocious they were in the Nile. It's this danger that appeals to some people who want to show their ability to tame wildlife and keep them as pets, although this pursuit rarely ends well for either the human or the hippo. One of the most famous hippo owners was South African farmer Maurice Ells, who adopted Humphrey the hippo when he was just five months old. During his life, the hippo seemed quite content to live on the 400-acre farm and swim in the purpose-built lake that Ells dug for him, and the farmer would often give talks on how tame and friendly the hippo was and be pictured riding around on its back. 
He was the first to admit that hippos were unpredictable and dangerous, though, and in 2011, this became a tragic reality. Humphrey bit Maurice multiple times and submerged him in a river, with his body only being found a few days later in virtually the exact spot the hippo had originally been rescued from. Watch our Animals Playlist for more Top 15 videos about animals. Sit back, relax, and binge watch all of our best animal-related videos.